Welcome to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast, where we help El Pasoans get away from taking pain medications, avoid getting injections, avoid surgery, and keeping up an active lifestyle. This podcast is presented to you by Dr. David Midoff, expert physical therapist and owner of El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. It is our goal and intentions to provide you with valuable tips and insights from experts in the El Paso area so you too can stay healthy, fit, and energized. Now here is your host, Dr. David. Hey there, welcome to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast. I'm your host, Dr. David Midoff, specialist physical therapist over at El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. And today we're going to be answering the question of can a rotator cuff tear heal naturally without surgery? This is a question we've been getting all week long in the clinic. We've had three patients this week, three brand new patients that have come in and asked some version of that question. And so I thought I just need to do a podcast on this. I need to talk about it so that there's if there's other people out there that are wondering the same thing, I'm sure there are, um, they can get the same information that I gave these patients that were here in the clinic this week. And with each and every one of them, we emphatically said, yes, it can. And we see it happen here in the clinic all the time. We, we get people that have a diagnosed rotator cuff tear. They've got their MRI report that shows they've got some tear of some sort. And they're considering having surgery for this because that's what most people in the medical field push patients with rotator cuff tears to do. But they end up coming to us for a second opinion to see if it's possible to avoid surgery so that they can get their shoulder motion back again and, and be able to sleep on that side and stop taking pain medications, avoid injections, and get their shoulder back. And the cool thing about this is there's research evidence, there's medical literature, medical research evidence out there that is supporting this. There's more and more research coming out gradually over the years where they've, com they've compared people that have had surgery and how they recover after the surgery and people that have avoided surgery and gone through conservative treatment, which is physical therapy pretty much, and they've found that six months and even up to a year later, they're all improved about the same amount. So this begs the question, is a surgery for rotator cuff tear even necessary? So we still have yet to find out exactly what type of rotator cuff tear absolutely needs surgery. Uh, as far as research goes, we, we don't have a clear-cut example or a clear-cut uh, algorithm or step-by-step -step process to figure out who really needs surgery and who doesn't. And what the medical field at large has done is just kind of overestimated and said, well, you have a tear, go get it operated on. But what we're finding more and more in the research and in cl clinic experience is that many people can get better without it. Let me tell you an example of a patient that we had just this past summer. Um, we had a client who came in who was scheduled to have a rotator cuff surgery um, two weeks out from when, she, when we saw her. Of course, she couldn't pick up her arm. It was hurting her. She said it felt like a toothache in her shoulder. If she moved it in, in just the right position, usually when she moved her hand outwards um, or reached all the way out, or if she picked up something heavy. In her case, she loves to garden and do active stuff out in the yard and, and at home. She's... She takes care of her home uh, quite a bit. And so every time she had to go do something that involves some sort of strenuous force with her arm, she would feel that shoulder bite her right away. I mean, it was even down to when she was cutting vegetables, you know, a harder vegetable like a carrot or something like that. If she had to push the knife down through a harder vegetable like that, it would hurt and jolt her shoulder at times. As we began treatment and saw, saw her improve, she gradually began to get more motions back, was able to hold more uh, uh, heavy, heavier things in her arm, able to use her arm in more forceful ways. And part of her treatment required us to take her into even weightlifting with that shoulder. Um, we actually did overhead weightlifting. That was what she needed to do. And we did it in such a way that was not aggravating the rotator cuff tear. And it, the timing is important as well. We can't just start like that. We have to work up to getting, uh, being able to do overhead weightlifting. So it is completely possible. We see patients here all the time. That's one example of many. I can think of another one we had in December. She was a, a CrossFitter and has, has done many exercises with her shoulders. She loved to row. She was also scheduled for surgery and ended up postponing it in the hopes that we would help her out. And we did. So she ended up can completely canceling her, her surgery for her rotator cuff tear. She was so happy about it. She was so glad that she could avoid it. And most importantly, we got her back to doing all the exercises that she was doing before with no shoulder problems. 
So if you're out there and you've got a rotator cuff tear, you think that you might have a rotator cuff tear because it, you've researched it, it sounds like you, you have one, you're probably wondering, well, what do I do next? How can I begin to solve this problem naturally without having surgery so that I can get back to doing everything I want? Well, let me tell you the next best three steps that you need to take right now. Number one, go get a sling. Like the type of sling that you might get in a hospital or an urgent care clinic if you hurt your shoulder or your arm, they sell them at Walmart, at CVS, at Walgreens, even grocery stores have them. It's the type of, of a sling that you just put your elbow into. It's got a cloth that like a, a cloth sling that you put your elbow into and then it's got a strap that comes around your shoulder over your neck and connects to the other end of the cloth sling by your hand. And what you want to do is tighten that up so that it shoves your shoulder up towards your, your, your head. You want it to be kind of firmly pressed up there, not too uncomfortable in case it's starting to hurt more, but it should feel like it's pressed up against your body and up against your head decently well. And the point of that is to take pressure off the ball and socket joint where the rotator cuff tear is. The rotator cuff muscles and tendons hold the ball up against the socket. So the weight of your arm just hanging with gravity can tension that tear. And so if you get that sling on and, and shove it all the way up, it takes that tension off the tear and can allow you to feel a little bit better in the short term, but also to begin the, the tendon healing. The, the tendon sometimes isn't a fully tear, it's just a partial tear. And if you ever have an MRI, they'll, they'll talk about that, a, a full thickness tear, partial thickness tear. Um, you can get into all those details, but um, what you want is to bring those edges of the tear together so that they have a chance at healing. So that sling is a big deal. Now, just because you're in a sling doesn't mean you have to be in it all the time. You're looking at getting into it when you're most active. So whenever you're doing chores around the house or maybe if your workplace is kind of busy, you want to put it on there. Obviously, if you have a very, very active job and you need your, your arm for just about everything, you might not be working right now. Um, but you, you want to have that sling on. Also, just for, for other people to know that you're not able to do things because if you're not wearing a sling and, and you have a rotator cuff tear, you usually can do things with your arm nearby that don't require a whole lot of force. But if you, if you go to do something more strenuous, then you'll hurt that shoulder and you don't want to be aggravating that shoulder constantly because you can make that tear worse. So if you have that sling on, it communicates to people around you immediately that you can't do certain things with that arm. So they are going to be more inclined to help you and you'll kind of get away with not using your arm more. Now that being said, think of the second tip that I'm going to give you here. You need to use your arm in ways that don't hurt it. So you don't want to completely stop using your arm just because you're in a sling now. And by the way, you don't want to have that sling on all the time. Just put it on at times when you feel like you need it. Uh, but do use your arm. If you can brush your teeth with your arm, do that. If you can reach your head or do your hair, do that. You know, in the shower, clean yourself up. Small things around the house, like cooking, uh, cleaning, your laundry. Do things that you can do without your shoulder hurting. You're going to have to slow down. You're going to have to pay attention. And you really, really want to avoid aggravating it. Because every time you do, it's kind of like picking at a scab. You know, if you cut your skin on your hand... And over time, you develop a scab. Well, it's going to be tender if you press on it, of course. But if you go start picking at that scab and peel it off, it's going to start bleeding. And you have to go through that healing process all over again. So it, you don't get a scab in your shoulder, but a similar healing process happens. And whenever you go to do something that just kind of on, is on the edge of pain, it's kind of like pressing on a scab. You're not going to set yourself back, but you found where it hurts. But if you do something that just forces your way through some pain and, and it hurts for some time afterwards, I mean, you're hurting for days afterwards because of that thing that you did. You picked up that, that real heavy thing. We had one client uh, that came in this week that said that he, he felt the tear when he went into the back of his truck to pick up a heavy toolbox up over the tailgate, just like so. And that's when he felt a rip and pain that lasted for several weeks afterwards. And so that's probably where, where he tore his, his rotator cuff. Um, obviously you don't want to do something like that. So you want to do the light things, but the movement's important because then you allow the muscles around your shoulder to, to work and to stay healthy and to not fully weaken as, as much as they can if you don't do anything. So you want to maintain 
easy, simple movements that are not bothering you and, and not flaring you up for long periods of time. The third thing that you need to do is go find specialist help. Rotator cuff tears are no joke. They can easily go bad and the last thing you want is to fully tear it and really make it so bad that you have to have surgery because uh, it's just a long recovery and a lot of times people end up having another rotator cuff tear later on. But if you get some specialist help, somebody who can help you heal this rotator cuff problem naturally, then you're going to be in great shape because they'll make sure that you're guided in your exercises, that you're guided in your routines, they, you know how to, that you know how to adjust your daily routine, uh, your workplace, your, your, uh, your ergonomics at home, at work, so that your shoulder isn't bothering you day to day and you know that it's getting better day to day. That is priceless because then you can have that confidence and that peace of mind that your shoulder is going to heal and you're not going to have to go under a surgeon's knife to make that happen. And I want you to know that it is possible in nine out of 10 cases from we, what we've seen here in the clinic to get back to doing everything you were doing before. I mean, push-ups, lifting weight up overhead, being able to do all the yard work you want, being able to pick up heavy things, your shoulder should be able to heal. The body is super resilient. Tendons are excellent at healing given the right environment. Other tissues in the area are, are really good at he healing, but we've got to find, as a, as a specialist physical therapist that helps people out like this, I can tell you we've got to find the root problems, which the rotator cuff tear itself is never the root problem. There's always some shoulder blade issues, some neck issues, some muscle imbalance problem that needs to be addressed in order to set up the rotator cuff tear to heal fully. And that's just not something that surgeons do or that physicians do. Their specialty is in medicines, and in surgery, which is fantastic if you need it, of course, but if you're, we're looking to fix the root problem of a rotator cuff tear so that it's not happening to you again and you're not having to rely on surgery, medications, injections, then talking to a specialist physical therapist that can treat the root of the problem is what you need to do next. Thanks for listening to this podcast, guys. I hope that you picked up a few things and saw that it's possible to heal a rotator cuff tear without surgery. I mean, we, we are always astonished at how this happens here in the clinic. I, I, I'm in it, and so I don't always see it in the moment. But as we get to the end of a treatment plan with the patient that has a rotator cuff tear, I get so excited when they're getting back to, you know, especially lifting weights. That's always like the, the big milestone for, for me as a therapist because I, I, I remember seeing these people coming in, holding their shoulder, not being able to move, not being able to pick up things, complaining about how it just hurt to even just lie down on that side and hurt to scratch their head and wash their hair. And now they're picking up 10 pounds over their head without any problems. They're just getting tired. It's just fatiguing for them, but it's not really hurting them. I, I, I'm always astonished at, at how that happens. And it's especially gratifying when that patient has the MRI report coming in the first visit and has a diagnosed rotator cuff tear because I'm always like, look, you healed it. You really did it. You, you got away with not having surgery. And, and not only are you just, you're not just surviving, you're thriving. You're, you're probably stronger now than you were before because you couldn't pick up 10 pounds overhead before. Your, your body wasn't strong enough to do that. So it's always super gratifying for me. But um, anyways, if you know of anybody that is suffering from a shoulder problem and possibly has a rotator cuff tear, please share this podcast with them, send it over their way and, and let them know what they need to hear this so that they can avoid having a surgery and avoid you know, the possibility of an infection or the surgery going wrong. You know, oftentimes surgery, this, the shoulder surgeries do go very well, um, but I always question is, was it even needed? Could you have avoided that? And did you learn how to prevent the next rotator cuff tear from happening? Because you, there's usually those root problems that we're dealing with and and oftentimes we sadly see people have two or three rotator cuff tears as the as the decades go by they just end up tearing it again because that root problem was never addressed if you're in the el paso area and you're considering hiring us to help you with your rotator cuff tear we're happy to help just go over to our website at epmanualpt.com and check out the cost and availability tab on the top of the website leave us your details in there and we'll be able to help you out as soon as possible we'll give you a call and and talk to you about um, your rotator cuff tear problem and see if it's the right one that we can help you out with you can also just call us at 915-503-1314 mention that you heard about us on this podcast 
and, uh, and we'll be happy to start talking to you about how to get your rotator cuff tear problem uh, handled naturally as long as we can uh, help it out. So we'll, we'll ask you questions. We just want to make sure that, that, um, that it's not some serious case that absolutely we're 100% sure you need to go see the doctor or the physician and possibly have a surgery. Can I gotta ask one favor of you, please? Can you go over to the podcast platform that you're listening to this on, whether it's iTunes or Google Podcasts or Stitcher, iHeart, um, all the other platforms that we're on, um, and just give us, leave us a five star review, please. If you thought this was helpful for you and you learned something, give us five stars. And if you can put up, put some comments in there about how it was helpful for you, that would help a lot. What we're looking to do with that is we want to get this podcast out to people that need to hear it. We just need to get some more listeners um, so that they can benefit from this and, and hopefully avoid an unnecessary surgery, get off of pain medications and, and avoid injections as well. And so the more positive reviews we have, the more, uh, we, the more what we get pushed out to, to people that are potentially looking for us. So we, you can help out the community at large by giving us a review. Um, it's not about us. I don't care that, you know, for ego's sake, I, I could care less. I know my information. I know what I know and I know it's helpful and we help people out all the time. And so, you know, if I, the, the five star reviews, I, I don't care about that. It just, it, it helps for other people. That's what I care about the most. Um, so anyways, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and um, we'll talk soon next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast, brought to you by El Paso Manual Physical Therapy, where we help El Pasoans get away from taking pain medications, avoid getting injections, avoid surgery, and keeping up an active lifestyle. If you'd like to learn more about what El Paso Manual Physical Therapy can do for you, call 915-503-1314 or visit our website at epmanualphysicaltherapy.com. Mention this podcast for a free discovery visit valued at $100. If you enjoyed what you've heard, please be sure to leave a review on iTunes and follow the show on your favorite listening platform so you won't miss an upcoming episode. Tune in next time to get the best health tips from experts in the El Paso area.